Hey everybody, good morning, Lee Stranahan. I thought I would do a quick periscope before I gotta, I gotta go to the airport soon, but I'm gonna do all the usual stuff. Do me a favor while I'm waiting for people to come in. Uh, Stranahan Report, Stranahan.com. Go sign up, it's free, free morning newsletter. Also, big special in citizenjournalismschool.com. While well, people are coming in, hey everybody, good morning. This is the more high energy. If you were, I did a, a free sample of the uh, Citizen Journalism School thing this morning. I was a little less high energy than I am in the periscopes, but I'm about to bring the smart, so here we go. Freedom of religion only applied to Christians. Let me ask you something, dummy. Let's go over this. What's freedom of religion like in Muslim countries? Where is there more freedom of religion, in Christian countries or Muslim countries? Now, come on, dummy. Answer. Answer. Tell me how many Christian churches in Saudi Arabia. Here's the hint. The number's less than one. Go ahead. Go ahead, dummy. You want to come in with your anti-Christian bigotry? Come on. Bring it. I'm high energy right now. Come on. Bring it. Answer the question. Don't come in talking smack and think that you're just going to get away. Tell me which has, where is there more freedom of religion, Christian countries or Muslim countries? Bring it. Bring it. Answer the question. Come on. That's weird. You're, yeah. First, right. I mean, it's not even close. This is not a close issue. So, okay. So let me, let me talk about this. So by the way, if you're having a, if you're having problems with citizen journalism school, let me just answer that. Do me a favor. Uh, just send me an email, stranahan at gmail.com. I'll get Shane on it. He got disconnected. That's too bad. So, uh, again, I'm slaying trolls this morning. I'm not playing around. This is a big deal. Thank God for the Trump administration. Thank God for Steve Bannon. It is so nice. It is so refreshing to have the opposite of Obama, right? So, but let's, let's talk about this because I want to talk about how the Republicans can screw this up, okay? So, I've asked a question before. Oh, let, let me just say this, too. Do me a favor. Let me, let's get a little flood of retweets going. Let's get more people in here. I'm going to make you smarter. This is why I am America's finest reporter. Uh, uh, let's let's talk about this. I'm, I'm going to give advice to the Democrats, friendly advice. And I'm going to give advice to the Republicans as well. Democrats, what are you thinking? I mean, I, I like it, but what are you thinking? You really want to be the party of Islam? Is that who you want to be? Because, by the way, the American people, even though you may cow them into not saying anything, are not with you on this one. Americans are not stupid. Americans, just because the media tries to feed a narrative, the, the relig it's a religion of peace and everything else, Americans see who's committing acts of terrorism around the globe daily, over and over again, and they know who it is. So the anti-Christian bigotry doesn't work. The pro-Islam propaganda doesn't work. And by the way, let's point out who it really doesn't work for. There's a real equivalent here to the issue of black-on-black -black crime. Okay, there really is. There's a real equivalent here. Most of the people killed by the Islamists are Islamic, right? Most of the people killed by Muslims overseas are other Muslims. This is a big Shia-Sunni proxy war in a lot of cases. That's what's going on. And the Islamists really go after Islamists. I learned this when I was in Lebanon in 2013. Uh, people would say to me, if you're a Christian in Syria, you might be kidnapped. There's a possibility you'd be killed. But if al-Nusra caught you, those are the people that, by the way, we were helping fund. Your tax dollars were helping fund al-Nusra. Not directly, a little more indirectly, but pretty directly. The weapons got to them. The money got to them. That was your taxpayer dollars. Thanks to Barack Obama and John McCain. Thanks to Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and John McCain and Lindsey Graham. Thanks to people like that. That's where your taxpayer dollars were going. But what they told me was if you were a Christian, it was dangerous in Syria. But if you were an Alawite Shia Muslim, it was deadly. They would just kill you. They would just kill you. And so... Uh, the situation is equivalent to black and black crime in the sense that the people who are in denial about the high black crime rate, particularly murder, the black murder rate's about six times higher than the white murder rate. I'm going to say that again. It's not close. If it were double, that would be shocking, right? If twice as many black people killed 
other people as white people. That would be shocking. Twice as many? That's big. Three times would be horrific. Four times, what? Right? But it's like six times higher. It's not close. It's six times higher per capita. But the left wants to be in complete denial about this. And who suffers for this? Who are most of the people who are killed by the black people who are killing six times as many? Other black people. They are literally, by being in denial, literally causing the death of more black people. That is not anti-racist. That's pro-racist, actually. That's like an extermination agenda, if you ask me. It's the same with their abortion agenda. Same thing. The, the rate of black abortions, much higher. Not even close. Much higher. Multiple times higher. It's an extermination agenda. So when anyone comes in and tries to virtue signal with me about how, how not racist they are, I just throw facts back in their face. And this gets to my point about how Republicans can screw this up. We're seeing the same thing with Islam. The biggest benefit to ending radical Islamist terrorism, the biggest benefit to ending the reign of radical Islamist would come to Muslims. Muslim men and women, especially women and children, would massively benefit from an end to Islamist terror, period. That's it. That's just the truth. So this denialism doesn't help, and all the sit-ins in the world don't change the facts. Now let me explain how the Republicans can screw this up. Very, very important here. The way to fight this stuff is on facts. The way to fight this stuff is on facts. The way to battle this is factually. The best way to fight accusations of racism is to, in fact, not be a racist. And if you are a racist, if you do have this thing in your head and you're going around and you think that, just pray on it. I don't know what to tell you. Pray on it. It's like it's, it's like some weird thing you got going with you. Even if you try to intellectualize it, it's weird. If you don't see that a guy like Thomas Sowell is better and smarter than a guy like, I, I don't know, Chuck Schumer. I, 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 I just pick, pick anybody. I don't know. I, I, Chuck Schumer, the, the real racists are going to go, well, Chuck Schumer's Jewish, so they're going to go, he's not really white. Ah. Ah. Racism's wrong. It's morally wrong. It's bad. Period. I don't know else to say it. This is one of the best ways to fight. So this is why when I see people being actually anti-Semitic, when I see people being actually racist, I call them out on it. Being actually racist is not politically incorrect. In fact, you're falling right into what the left wants you to do. It's probably not the reason you're doing it. But I've seen people who say racist stuff and go, I'm politically incorrect. No, you're a racist dummy. You're a moron. And the point is, those people need to be shunned. Not just shunned, argued with. Argued with. You're saying something that's wrong. I'm an individualist. The reason I oppose racism is the same reason I oppose communism. They're both collectivism. They don't look at the individual, right? They don't look at the individual person. They look at the group. That's what stupid communists do. And stupid racists are making the same errors as, as stupid communists. But the good thing is people can change and people can evolve out of that. You can't actually evolve out of it. There are people who end up getting that way because they're so sick of being called a racist and everything else. And there is a psychological effect that's very, very interesting. If you call somebody something long enough, they sort of become it. So don't fall for the bait. Don't take the bait. Don't become that thing. Be an, be an ardent def person against racism. I talk about this because the way to screw it up is any, I have a zero tolerance policy for people who advocate actual violence and stuff like that. I see this sometimes in the comments of Breitbart and it always bothers me. It's like, oh, they deserve to be shot or whatever. It's like, go away. I don't even know if they're actual conservatives. But the, the way to screw this up is to not approach this factually. We're winning right now. If you're a Trump supporter, if you're a populist nationalist, right, not a racial, racial nationalist, if you're a populist nationalist, we're winning. We're winning right now. And we're winning with the American people. And it's a little hard to see sometimes because the media is so omnipresent. The media is so all-consuming that most of the media, they'd like to pretend they're winning. And they're just 
They're just running the same playbook over and over again that lost them the election. So Democrats, if again, if you want to put Keith Ellison in charge of the DNC, you go for that. You absolutely go for that. I applaud you in doing that. I want you to do it because I would like your party to be ground into the ground and the earth salted where you were. Unfortunately, you've got some sane people in your party, right? And they may take over after you realize this strategy of going all Islamic all the time is not working for you, right? Do you, do you need a couple more Pulse nightclub shootings? Is that what you need? You need a few more of those for you to be convinced that maybe Islam and your pro-feminist, pro-gay, pro-diversity agenda doesn't really fit with Islam at all in any way. Do you need that? Okay. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope I hope Donald Trump is able to stop it with his extreme vetting. And I and we need extreme vetting because there's an extreme problem right now. And by the way, that's why he was elected. So I hope they keep it up. Anyway, I'm gonna do the part where I put on my glasses. Yeah. Islam's not big on other religions. It's it's No, but by the way, Islam hates, no, Islam doesn't hate everything not Islam. Islam hates Islam, too. Populist, someone's asking what a populist means. That's a, a good, valid question. The term gets thrown out a lot. Thanks. This is, which one is this? This is, oh, this is California. I have three. I have Vegas, Texas, and uh, California. No, no, I had to see which, I have multiple in and out shirts. I, I, I knew it was an in and out shirt. I couldn't tell. Uh, so Islam's a manufactured religion. I don't even know what that means. You're just spouting cliches and nonsense now. It's not a manufactured religion. It's an actual religion. It's a but it's a very political religion. But it's manufactured. How's it? Is Judaism manufactured? I don't know. It's, so the left does not defend Sharia law. That's inaccurate too. You don't even know what you're talking about. If you're gonna, if you're just coming in here, it's not a copy of Christianity. Do you know anything about the history of Islam? It's not a copy of Christianity. And the term cult, look, if you want to come in here, I don't, I don't pander. This is, you're the people who screw things up. You just come in here like Islam's a cult. What does that mean? This is not a conversation you can have with people. And Islam is not, yeah, 14K comments is pretty impressive. Is, Islam is not a copy of Christianity. Islam's got a very distinct history. And part of it is military domination. Part of it was the Prophet Muhammad in Medina and Mecca. So look look into it. Get educated. Really, actually get educated. Actually become smarter. Become smarter. It's very political. It's political at its heart. And it's about domination. And this domination started almost immediately. But it's not a copy of Christianity. Christianity I'm not even arguing the theology here. It's simply very different. Christianity was about personal redemption, right? It's about being redeemed and being saved, and salvation is open to everybody, right? Jesus' central message was not behead the infidel, right? It's very different. So there you go. And I don't even, people say it's an ideology. Yes, it is, and so is I, I was on the radio the other day and someone was trying to make a difference between ideology and philosophy or, it, it, yeah, it's an ideology, but ideology is a, a, a generic term. Let me talk about the question. What, somebody asked a good, good question earlier and I got, I got lost in there. Yeah, see, as soon as you say stuff like it's considered a cult, like Mormonism and Christianity, you're going down a very dumb road. You're, you're now in the you're now in the realm of opinions because you know what a cult is a cult in some ways is an unpopular religion oh populist thanks for reminding me so populism the term gets thrown around a lot people don't talk about what it means enough I'm going to be starting a new uh, podcast called the populist talking about the philosophy behind it populism the, the the short definition I like to use is anti elitism okay another way to say it is anti-oligarchy, okay? Uh, populism is the view, broadly, that there is an elite 
And this typically consists of high-powered politicians and high-powered business leaders who've learned to do business together, right, in an oligarchy, okay? So when you get big business and big government together on the same page, lots of bad shenanigans happen because it's simply too much power, right? So populism is the idea that the people should actually have more power. That's the way I define populism. And again, the short definition I use is anti-elitism. One of the reasons I like anti-elitism as a definition is it makes it very clear what you're against, right? Populism kind of makes it very clear what you're for. You're for the people, right, the populace. But what you're against is these elites uh, running things. And Donald Trump proves... Yeah, there's, there's cult. Someone's saying the thing about cults. That, that is a cult-like aspect of Islam in general. They're very down on that. My point is, why don't you say that instead? Because as soon as you just say Islam is a cult, it's poor argumentation. What you're doing is, you're do, I'm just telling you, you're doing a slogan to make yourself feel better. You have to ask yourself something about argument. Is your point an argument to make yourself feel better, which I see that all the time, and I see it from people on the right. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, are, you, are you arguing to hear yourself talk, or are you arguing to change someone's opinion? Does that make sense? So, if you say Islam's a cult, that's something you do so people around you who agree with you will go, yeah, it's pandering, right? It's the equivalent of going out and saying you're playing, you're in a rock band and you're playing in Cleveland and goes, you know, Cleveland rocks more than any other town. The whole crowd goes nuts. And then the next night you're in Texas, you go, Texas rocks. And everyone goes, yeah, right. It's pandering. Stop pandering. Rather than just come in with slogans, slogans don't work real well with me. Bumper stickers don't work real well with me. If you want to come in and say, Islam, you can't leave. They, they treat apostasy with death, and it's written right into the Quran. That's a solid argument. You see, that's something that somebody, as soon as you get into their occult, there's a difference. If you're actually trying to change someone's opinion, just saying they're occult, drill down a little. Drill down to something more specific that the other person, this is, I'm, I'm really big on uh, creating unassailable arguments. And it's really easy when you just say they're a cult to get in a cul-de-sac. Oh, well, Christianity is a cult too. Oh, well, right. But when you say like, like Islam punishes apostasy with death, and it's right in the Quran, then they go, well, Christianity publishes, a, and you go, no, it actually doesn't. Read the Bible. Show me in the Bible where it says, it, it says you need to be saved to go to heaven. It does say that. But on earth... Christianity actually allows for much greater freedom. People can leave Christianity, and they don't get killed, typically. And there are some sects of Christianity, but overall, Islam, that's just a, a, a rule overall in Islam. And in fact, while we're talking about it, if you look at the Pew re Research results, a lot of Muslims believe that death, and then you pull up the Pew results. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's all very, very factual. I try not to get into arguments that you can't win, right? I, that, that's what I'm trying to do. So if I'm critical of you coming in and going, Islam's a cult or something like that, it's because I'm critical of people arguing for the sake of hearing themselves talk. Look, let me just finish this. I'm, I'm, I, I, want, I want wins, right? I want to change the culture. Uh, I'm on a, I talk about with citizen journalism school. I'm on a mission to save journalism. I'm on a mission to win here big. And the way to win big is to get better arguments. It's not to yell louder. The way to win is to explain things to people, not to yell at them. Does that make sense? That's, that's what I'm about. And so, I, and I talk about this all the time. Uh, I used to be on the left. I, when I met Andrew, I wrote for Huffington Post and everything else. Andrew never argued with me. He never insulted me. He told me his opinions, he stated them, he's passionate about them, and gradually that changed my mind. Okay? 
You don't change people's opinions by insulting them. You don't. And you can do this on anything. You can make the decision to just insult people. And your friends may like it. Your intellectual allies may like it. You may get people going, yeah. But you know what? And again, I, you know, look, you know, someone came in, I called him a dummy. So whatever. Right? But, but it's not just a dummy. It's like, it's like, I'm, I'm running down what the argument is. You're, the person came in and said, oh, well, you know, just religious freedom for Christians. Bring that on. Maybe I couldn't, maybe I shouldn't have called him a dummy. I don't know. But my, my point is I see some people who the only argument they have is dummy. The only argument they have is, is insults. My arguments are so intellectual, so unassailable, and so smart that I occasionally need the escape valve. It uh, doesn't sound like I'm justifying anything, does it? Anyway, love you guys. I got to go because uh, uh, I got to pack and then I got to go to D.C. I'm in D.C. this week. Lots more coming. Looking forward to it. Let me do all this stuff. Do me a favor. Retweet it. Let's make other people smarter. There's enough people in here we can retweet it. Also, citizenjournalismschool.com. Big sale right now. If, if you didn't watch my video this morning, if you don't know what Citizen Journalism School is about, Go to citizenjournalismschool.com, watch the video I made for you, and then watch the thing this morning. You'll get a sense of, I'm, I'm kind of different on the Citizen Journalism School uh, calls. But I got a lot to do. Anyway, love you guys. If I have a layover, if I have a big layover, I may, I want to see, I'm going to see if there's any protesters in Chicago, too. We'll see. Bye.